Yeah. Oh, now you can see everything. Very good. Very good. Yes. Okay. Okay. So we go to the next page. Can you still see? Uh, it's a little out at the top from now. Now it's good. Now it's okay. good. Yeah. Okay. Now the integrable highest weight G height modules with central charge is small c. So, so, so this is small c was the level of the central charge, which was fixed once and for all. So now let's look at integrable uh, highest weight G height modules. So G height is the affine Lie algebra with central charge C and central charge just means the action of this uh, capital C, the central element. So that is in bijective correspondence with this set DC, which was introduced on the last page. So DC was this set uh, uh, consisting of dominant integral weights such that lambda theta check is at most C. Okay, so, uh, so this DC parametrizes all the integrable highest weight uh, uh, G height modules with central charge is small c. And let's denote, given any lambda in DC, let's denote by H lambda the corresponding integrable highest weight module. Now, so this is the, the fundamental object in this conformal field theory. So this is the space of dual conformal blocks. And there is also a, a similar conformal block, but uh, that's just the dual space of conformal blocks. Okay, so now, we have already taken the S-pointed curve sigma p, where this uh, p, vector p, consists of S many points. All of them are smooth and distinct. Sorry, I, I should have mentioned that. They are smooth and distinct points. Now, we, we take one more ingredient here, and that is this vector lambda, which consists of lambda 1 through lambda s, exactly as many as small s, many. And this lambda i is attached to the point pi. And what is this lambda i? So lambda i is an element in DC. So we are thinking of that each point pi is attached to a representation h of lambda i with same central charge. So we are not changing the central charge, c. Now we define h lambda to be the tensor product of all these. So h lambda 1 tensor up till h lambda s. Uh, so that's, now on this one, the Lie algebra, and what is this Lie algebra? G tensor C, sigma minus P. So what is that? So we are removing the points uh, P1 through PS from sigma, okay? And now we are taking the affine coordinate ring there, and we tensor it with G. Now this Lie algebra, okay, so, so I should define the bracket first. So the bracket here is, maybe again, it might go off the screen. So the bracket here is x tensor f, y tensor g, that's the, the plain and simple bracket, x, y tensor f, g, where f and g are functions on sigma minus p. Now there is one technical thing I'm glossing over, uh, uh, and that is, the choice of P should be such that every reusable component of sigma must get at least one point so that the sigma minus P is an affine variety. And that will, uh, that will give up for us a ample supply of regular functions on sigma minus P. In any case, now the basic object is this dual conformal blocks. And that is, we take this H sigma, sorry, H lambda, uh, H uh, uh, vector lambda, so that's the tensor product of these representations. And we mod out by uh, action of G tensor C sigma minus P to H lambda. Now, I have not told you exactly how it acts on H lambda, which I'm going to tell you in a minute. But this, so take this Lie algebra, act it on H lambda. So that will generate a subspace of H lambda, take the quotient. And that is the basic object in conformal field theory. That is called the space of dual conformal blocks. Now, the conformal block is nothing but the dual of this space. So dual, dual is the conformal block. Okay. Now, now let me tell you what is the action of G tensor, this C sigma minus P on H lambda. And that action is given by Is it in focus? Uh, can you move it to the left and a little bit down also? 
yes, uh, yes, I think we can see it now, at least for a while. Okay. Okay. So X tends R F, where X is in the Lie algebra and F is a regular function on sigma minus P that acts on this tensor plot V1 tensor Vs, where Vi is in H lambda I and F is a regular function on sigma minus P. So this action is, we take the sum from one through S V1 and on the ith factor, we act by X tensor F. But mind that F is really a regular function on sigma minus P. So what we do, we take its, we fix a local parameter at the point PI, okay? Now PI is a smooth point. So we can, we, uh, we will have a local parameter. So let's fix the local parameter TI on sigma at PI. And now we take F at TI is the Laurent series expansion of F at PI through the coordinate TI. So we, we use this coordinate TI and get a LoRa series expansion of F at TI. So that will give us, so FTI becomes an element in uh, the LoRa series uh, 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 in TI. So that will act, see the H lambda I was going to be acted upon by G tensor CT or the central extension of that. So that's the action. And we sum over from one through S. Okay, now uh, there, there is this lemma, which says two things. First of all, this is space, which I defined, the space of dual conformal block. This is a finite dimensional vector space. So that's fact number one, which is not too difficult to prove, but that it does require a proof. It's, uh, it's not totally straightforward, but it's not too difficult either. So this is a finite dimensional vector space over complex numbers. Moreover, it does not depend upon the choice of the local parameters. So I said that let's make a choice of local parameter ti at the point pi. Uh, so it does not depend upon the choice of the local parameter up to a canonical isomorphism. And that canonical isomorphism is canonical up to a scalar choice. Now in this whole theory, there is uh, the whole thing depends upon uh, a choice which is usually okay, but uh, only up to a scalar multiple. Okay, now this is a finite dimensional vector space. Now it depends upon the curve sigma, the points P, and the choice of these weights lambda one through lambda S in DC. And it's a finite dimensional vector space. So if you have a finite dimensional vector space, the most important question, uh, the most basic question is, what is the dimension of this space? Okay. So as I said, this space depends upon the choice of sigma, the curve, the points, and the choice of lambda. Now, Eric Verlind made a conjecture in 1988. And actually, it's interesting. He made this conjecture, I think, while he was at the Institute for Advanced Study where I am right now. Okay, so, so now I am going to tell you the basic idea of the proof. Now, the full proof really is fairly long. It has several ingredients uh, and many of those ingredients take several, several pages. Actually, if you write the full proof, uh, it will be, it will occupy 100 pages. But I'm going to give you the basic idea of the proof as to what are the main ingredients and how does one really prove that. So, so I'm going to list some of the theorems and I will explain to you. Okay, so again, it might have gone out of focus. Is the last lines readable? It's a little bit to the right. Can you move it to the yes. whole thing to the left? No, I, I move it to the left or I move it to the right? Uh, you we can see your mouse instead of your paper. So say it again. We can see your mouse instead of your paper. Move it where ah, your mouse is. Okay, 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 okay. I see, I see. Okay, okay, okay. So, so I know what do we do. Can you see the paper now, or it has gone even worse? Move it where the mouse was. Ah, okay. How about this? It's still missing something at the right side of your paper. 
Oh, the right side of move, the paper is missing. You moved the camera oh, too. Okay. There How we about go. that? That's yeah, good. Now we can see it. Now you can see it. Okay. So the first theorem, it is called propagation of vacua. So what it says, so this V sigma is the space of dual conformable blocks. So V sigma P lambda is same as we attach one more point. Okay. We attach one more point. Let's call it Q0. This should be a distinct point and it should be a smooth point. That's the requirement. That it should be a distinct point from P and it should be a smooth point. And to that point, to the P, we have already attached these weights lambda i. But to the point Q0, Q0 I am going to attach the, uh, the weight 0. But the central charge is still small c. So the corresponding representation of a finely algebra is not the, uh, the trivial representation. It's the representation with G highest weight zero, but central charge small c. Okay. So now let's move to the next page. So that's one theorem. And it says that you can add more points without changing the dimension as long as you uh, attach the, the weight zero to those points. Mm -hmm. Now, you, next you, comes the factorization theorem. Is it visible? No, uh, it, it needs to go towards the mouse again to the left. Yes. Okay, very good. So the next theorem is called factorization theorem. And it is a very important theorem in this whole theory and you will see why, but let me first explain the theory. Theorem. So, so let's start with a nodal curve. So it can have one node or it can have several nodes. So node basically means that it's a singularity of the type X times Y equals zero locally. So a node just means that it has a singularity of X times Y equals zero. So let's start with a nodal curve, uh, but but keep in mind that the, 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 uh, uh, the points P vector, these are all smooth points. And let small q be that nodal point, which we are just going to choose one of them. I mean, it might have several no nodal points, but I'm going to choose one of them or fix one of them q. So that's the, uh, a node, nodal point. And now I'm going to take the normalization of the curve only at Q. So we are going to normalize the curve only at Q. Uh, and let the sigma hat be the normalized curve. And now this Q will blow up into two points, Q prime and Q double prime. Now this, even though sigma was connected, there is no guarantee that sigma hat will be connected, but, but never mind. Okay. So now this factorization theorem, what it asserts, that this V sigma P lambda, that was the basic uh, uh, space of uh, dual conformal block, that space is canonically isomorphic. And again, this canonical is up to a scalar. This whole theory is canonical is up to a scalar. So projectively, everything is canonical, but uh, not otherwise. So now we are going to take the direct sum where mu runs over all the weights in DC. There are only finitely ma many weights in DC because lambda theta check has to be at most C. So there are only finitely many weights. And now we take the space of conformed block, not for sigma, but for sigma height, where we have now uh, this point Q has been resolved and it has obtained two smooth points. Now I'm going to take the pointed curve sigma height to be the original points, P, P, P uh, vector. These are smooth points in sigma. They remain, of course, smooth in sigma height. In fact, we have not done anything to them. But now I add two points, Q prime and Q double prime. Now they have become smooth points in sigma height. So this is completely legitimate. Now I take lambda vector, the original one, attached to the points P. But now to the point Q prime, I attach mu star, and to the point Q double prime, I attach the weight mu, where mu runs over DC. That's a finite set, it's running over that. And now I take this finite sum of dual conformal block. And this factorization theorem says 
that the original space of conformal block is isomorphic with this uh, uh, direct sum of these conformal blocks. Now, let me tell you right away what is its importance, and we will tell, uh, I mean, we will discuss it in more detail in a few minutes. Now, if the arithmetic genus of original sigma was G, okay, so arithmetic genus just means that H upper one of sigma with coefficient in the structure sheaf. So arithmetic genus. G is nothing but dimension of H1 sigma O sigma. That's the definition. Okay. So now, so when we start with sigma with arithmetic genus G, the sigma height has an arithmetic genus G minus one. So right away what we see that when we are calculating this dimension of conformal block for a curve of genus G, we reduce the problem to a genus G minus one curve. And eventually we will inductively reduce the problem to a genus zero curve, which is nothing but P1. Uh, anyway, I'm going to come to this in more, more detail uh, in a few minutes. Okay, let's keep, ah, okay, I have two more minutes before. Now, uh, so, so far we talked about conformal blocks, our dual conformal block for a single curve, with some marked points P and weights attached to that lambda, uh, vec lambda vector. Now we are going to shifify the situation and how we are going to shifify, we are going to take sigma T over T, a family of S pointed curves. So basically what it means that T is, let's, let's say T is a smooth scheme, although it does not have to be. Uh, just for convenience, let's assume that T is a smooth scheme and sigma t to t is a uh, proper morphism and a flat morphism. Proper and flat morphism. And what we are requiring that this pi, this map from sigma t to t, has sections now, p1 through ps, and pi are sections of pi. They are mutually disjoint at every point. And if I take a small t in capital T, then pi inverse t is a S-pointed curve for any geometric point t in capital T. So what we are doing, we are just shififying the earlier situation. Now we are allowing a family of curves with, uh, I mean, family of marked, uh, family of curves with marked points, but we are keeping the same lambda. We are not changing the lambda. So we will still keep lambda one through lambda s, and we will attach at every point small t in capital T, the same lambda one through lambda s. So this gives us sheaf of conformal blocks. And so V of sigma t p lambda. So this becomes a sheaf over t now. And this sheaf has the property that if I specialize this sheaf at a small t in t, then we get the uh, original uh, sheaf of, uh, sorry, uh, space of dual conformal block. But we can shifify the situation, that's the sheaf. And I see that I have just 25 minutes. So we can have a few minutes break at this stage. Unless anybody has any question. <laughs>